of God. Amen. When the word is rightly divided, it is a blessing. It is a blessing. You know, it's good to know that we don't have to have a, just a physical vessel or to be our vessel. Our vessel, which man is spirit inside of a body. So, body that is a vessel of flesh to the spirit. But, but it's good to know we don't have to just have a, a vessel or a body that's flesh. We have a vessel that's a spirit. Our spirit can dwell inside of a spiritual vessel. It's good to know that. Some people get confused and say, well, the body is with the spirit. They think that maybe the spirit has to live in just a weak, dirt, flesh and blood, some dirt vessel. But the spirit can actually dwell inside of a spirit vessel of greater power. Consider what Prophet Jesus was saying about Christ says, see, we have flesh and bone, spirit, flesh and bone. But the disciples stick his hand into his side with his standing there. Thrust his hand into his side or see the nails still in his hand while he's standing there. It was not hurt. It was amazing. It was really amazing to be seen. Wonderful promise that is set before us to likewise be born from the dead. Like as Christ, we signify that in baptism. That when we are buried with Christ, when we rise by the war and leave us alive, making that covenant, that we're going to walk and leave us alive. We are saying that we are going to be born of the God from the grave also. That's our hope. That's our hope. We make the covenant, we're, we're going to walk in units of life, but also proclaim the hope of the gospel. As Christ was risen in immortality, we shall be risen in immortality. We got from the grave, our body shall be born from the grave or changed. Those who still be alive and the Messiah's return. Jesus said, not one hair of your head shall perish. Help your name to destroy the body. Because not one hair of your head will perish. You will be born from the grave as he was born or begotten unto the Father by the Holy Spirit from the grave. The Father said to the Son, even the seed of Abraham that he had taken on, this day have I forgotten the flesh part of my son. A prince after order of Melchizedek. Spirit body, please of my Melchizedek, my brother. And you have a spirit body. It's good day. And that is our hope. Not only to be born of the Holy Spirit of the end, but we have the hope also of not being born of the grave. We have the hope of being forgotten from the dead. It is our hope. It is the hope that we have to be forgotten from the grave, to be born from the dead. He will be gathered from the grave one day into everlasting life. He will begin us from the grave. I want to begin reading from the uh, 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. Concerning faith, and then we're going to teach you concerning something that's important for us to understand also. Very important. It's a wonderful hope that we have. The hope of being born from the grave is a wonderful hope. Beautiful hope. Our body shall be born from the dead. It's a beautiful hope. 
How many people really understand that when Christ said you must be born of the Spirit, he was saying not only be born of the Spirit within, but also your body must be born of the Spirit, even born from the dead. To even go into the kingdom of heaven, where should blood go in heaven. So a lot of people don't see it, but you have to be born first into the kingdom by being born of the Spirit. So then the tale will come if you serve him, that your body will be born from the dead. Paul will be explaining that in the 15th chapter of Corinthians. It's amazing how all these things are explained in the scripture. It is amazing. This is an amazing book, if you understand it. It is amazing. This is a great hope. But it's necessary to know that before we can be saved in the hope, we must have faith in Christ. Before we can be saved in the gospel, we have to have faith in you. That will explain something about faith before I go into explaining something else. Before we can grasp this beautiful hope that God has set before us, this hope of God that God has given to us in himself, of himself, through his Son, is even Christ in us, being born in us. See, Christ was anointed with Elohim, the Holy Ghost. So every time we're born of the Holy Ghost, we're born of Christ. That seed branching itself. So you see, the Messiah was christened or anointed with the Holy Ghost as he became the Christ. Christ he christened or anointed. So he was anointed with Elohim, the Holy Ghost. As a part of his being, a scepter of the Father. So when we are born of the Holy Ghost, the Lord of Christ, the Lord is me. This great hope is through faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now it must be understood what this is saying before one can grasp it. So I'm going to give it a little bit. Simple terms, add a little something to it to put out what he's talking about. In other words, what he's saying is that of the heart and mind, psychological faith is the substance of things that are hopeful psychologically. Faith is the substance of hope psychologically. In other words, we have faith in God, in our heart and man. And that is the substance of hope in our heart and man. Just as it's true naturally. Psychologically, faith is the substance of hope of you getting in your car and driving downtown. It's the faith in your car. Faith, psychologically, psychological faith, the faith in your heart and your mind. It's the substance of hope. The hope of you walking across the street Walking across your room, faith is the substance of that hope or expectation that you can't do it will be able to do that. It is faith in your legs, the strength of your legs. That gives you the expectation or the hope that you can walk over to the other side of the room. It is faith in your eyes that lets you see the other side of the room. That gives you the hope of being able 
to walk on to that side road that you are looking at with your eyes. You may take your legs for granted and you may take your eyes for granted and not realize it's for faith in your legs, the strength of your legs, your feet, and so on. Your faith in your eyes that you have the expectation of going to that certain point on the other side of the room wall to go across the room. But that's faith, that substantiates that hope, that is the substance of that hope. Without faith, hope cannot exist because faith is the substance of hope. Whatever it is that is in your hope, whatever thing is that you're hoping for, faith is the substance of hope. Without faith, there is no hope. You might think this to be not true, but without faith in your own the strength of your arms, you wouldn't have the hope of picking up a book, picking up a pencil. Without faith in your arms, without faith in your fingers, you couldn't have that expectation. You might take it for granted, but if you look around and see someone who was paralyzed, it helps you understand. You look around and you see someone who is blind. And you maybe it helped you understand that you couldn't have an expectation without faith. See, we're born, most of us were born seeing, so we kind of take our eyes for granted. So we don't know what faith is. We kind of take our hands and our arms and our fingers for granted. So you see somebody without arms or without fingers. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And you realize, yes, you have the expectation of walking across the room for a Without faith, you could not have hope. You walk on the ground because you have faith in it to hold you up. You have seen others walk on it. You have walked on it. You were walking on it from a child, seeing your parents walk on it. Oh yes, it's fine. You don't let me go out there and walk on the Mississippi River. And see, check your bag before you step on it. What about you have faith in the water holding you up? Yes, you can even have faith in the garden. You might take it for granted. You woke up this morning expecting to breathe fresh air and the sun to shine on this year. Faith in the sun. Time is coming when it will shine. But you need to understand without faith, you can't have hope. Faith is the substance of hope. So the apostle is explaining here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Psychologically, faith is the substance of hope. Being as things are within our hope. Faith that cannot substantiate hope, it don't have no substance. Faith that cannot substantiate hope or expectation, that is, it has no substance. But you have faith in your friend. And you can't expect them to be a friend to you to do nothing for you. That faith don't have no substance. You can't expect something without faith in someone. You expect to be able to read. But you know that requires faith in your own brain. Yes, you have to have faith in your brain. So you have to have faith in your eyes. You get ready to smell something, you smell. Did you know that you expect to smell it through faith in your nose? No, no, not that expect. That's hope. In Hebrews 11, when it says, hope for, 
is talking about expecting. So when it says hope for, it means looking forward to expecting something. If it's not hope for, it's not expected. Faith is only the substance of expectation. And being if it's not expected, then that means you don't have faith for it. We have the hope of everlasting life of God. Can't look for that if you don't have faith in God. Try expecting to go to heaven and receive everlasting life of God without faith in God. It's not my mystery here when you explain about faith. We use faith the other day. We use faith when we get up and walk across the room. We have faith in our shoes. We expect them to keep the ground from hurting our feet. We have faith in our